having trouble getting decent tight groups at really any kind of range. Um, I don't really think it's me because I can put with another rifle I, I can do better groups. I think it's the rifle and today I noticed something which could, well I don't think potentially is actually contributing towards it. Um, when you grab the rifle at the front and you move it, it can just flop around. It's not too bad that way, it tends to go back to where it's supposed to. But when you come over here, it can be sitting like that. So I fired a few test shots with it. I pushed the barrel out, I pushed the barrel and the action over to there, fired a few test shots. By the time I'd finished, it had moved back over to here. So I think the stock needs bedding. We'll get on with that and I'll show you how I think a rifle stock should be bedded. I don't really know, I've never done it before. Of course the internet is a wonderful thing. Um, I can use uh, shoe polish as a release at police agent to stop everything from sticking and JB Weld apparently is quite good. But I've never really bothered, other than picking up this rifle and shooting it, looking into the internals of it. So what I'm going to do now is quickly um, quickly take the, the action out of the stock and see what this particular stock would be like because obviously you're bedding the action to the stock so each stock is going to be different. Well then with the, the um, action screw taken out you can see almost instantly just how much movement there is. I'll tip the rifle over that way and hold it still. There's a good two or three mil backwards and forwards. It also rocks uh, left and right. So the whole thing seems to be pivoting around a point inside. Now you can see it even better from back there. The, tr the traditional way to deal with this is to, like I say, is to bed the rifle. Um, I suppose you could put shims down here and shim it over to one side so that it's always over that side. Um, you saw from earlier on in the video, there's the barrel channel is, is huge, it's absolutely massive. There's enough room for um, a one inch barrel in this stock and this has got a standard stainless barrel on it that tapers out at the end. And you can see the barrel tapers and then right there there is absolutely tons of room. So I think bedding it is probably the best way to go. So we'll go for it. As you can see, the 1022 is a bit awkward to bed compared to a lot of rifles. It seems to sit, the action seems to sit basically on a on a ledge on the inside and the entire cutout is pretty much hollow all the way along. So we'll add some bedding material here We'll have bedding material around here and around the back there. And hopefully that will give us a much more secure attachment between the stock and the action. So the first job we have to do when we're bedding is get the barrel in the middle. The action's already loose and undone. So the barrel should just be able to move around. And we achieve that by rolling tape around it at a forwards point so that it centralises. So we'll put a, a wrap of tape around here. It needs to come out quite a way because the, the channel in the stock is quite big. This isn't as easy as it looks.
we'll stop there and give that a test. That's sitting in there pretty snug. That was actually a wicked first guess. Now we're one step closer. Well done. Let's breach flag out. These are the pins. Get the trigger group out of the way. I think I got a bit carried away with the oil. But I'll give that a clean out while we're out. Because um, this JB well takes four hours ish to cure. So the next step is to cover all of these surfaces that are going to touch the, the JB weld with a release agent. For which I'm going to use black shoe polish. It's wax, it should work good enough as a release, release agent. But first of all, we're going to give all this a bit of a clean up. Right then, the action's been cleaned. <clears throat> so now we've got to work out where we touch. Now, this is where the takedown screw sits. So we want some in the front here. We've got sideways movement. And I'm assuming that this part of the receiver sits on this ledge, which I don't think you can see without me zooming in. So this edge of the receiver, the bottom edge of the receiver, sits on this ledge around here. And then this part sits on the, on the ramp at the front, which is there. So I'm going to need something to stop this JB weld from running off the back of this ramp. And I'm also going to need something to stop the JB world running off of the edge of this lip because I think, I'm not entirely sure, but I think the trigger group sits on a ledge in there as well. So we'll have to be very careful of that bottom edge. So I'm wondering if I should bed the trigger group in as well. I need to put that back on the action. So no, I'm not going to bed, bed the trigger group in. I will just bed this front part. The shelf. What I need to do is get up the sides because the movement, the movement in the um, in the action is sideways. It doesn't look like much, but it can be quite substantial. Right, so this is what the, the place where the action can sit looks like. 1022. I'm going to focus on getting a corner in here and a corner in there at the very least on the first run. Probably going to have to do this twice to get it right. And a small flat spot at the front of here. Right, with that done and prepped, I'm now going to apply boot polish 
everywhere on here where um everywhere on the action where the JB world might even stand a chance of touching. Now it's got a nice coat of wax on it. Let's two pins back here. this JB world out and something to mix it up on and also need something to mix it up with so a load of stuff is textured I'm going to drill a couple of small holes down each side for the JB world to go into I'm going to have to do it very carefully so I don't drill a hole right the way through the stock because the stock isn't very thick so we'll put one in the back There you can see we've got a few holes drilled in there. Well, Mrs. Rifleman is looking through the uh, serving hatch laughing for some reason. Maybe, uh, maybe she wants to be black waxed as well. So we'll mix up some of this stuff. I'd really love to know why they make all two-pack stuff smell like cat urine. Why can't they make it smell like strawberries? No, it won't stop coming out. So it looks pretty well mixed, so we'll just get on with it.
this stuff does seem to go a bit liquidy, which is a bit of a pest. I've never used this stuff before. So it's going to be slightly difficult to get it to stick to the sides. So if I bring it right the way up to the top, or nearly to the top. Keep our pinkies crossed with that. Actually fills in the void and stops the wobbling. I'm pretty down there so you can have a close look. There's the front. And there's the back. Now the scary part. If our fingers well and truly crossed, we don't end up gluing the action to the stock. And scary part, scary part. Push the action down in there firmly. stuff off of me. A couple of little tiny splashes of JB Weld on the side there, I'll lift them off. Now I was going to put the screw in to hold it down, but I don't really think I can without ending up with the screw glued. Secure it in place. And please take it around the back. And please take it around the front. Check it's central, which it looks to be, and then we'll put one piece of tape around here. You guys will be waiting about a second. I'll be waiting about five hours. So keep our fingers crossed that I haven't just accidentally glued my action to my stock. All right, we'll record this for posterity. And if I have somehow managed to stick my action to my stock, I should put it up on YouTube so everybody can laugh at me. Because that's the kind of guy I am. So, let's get these bits of tape off. Well, it's definitely time. <clears throat> I've got um at the back. If the camera will ever focus. This seems to be a slight lip. I don't want to force it out. Well, thank the Lord for that. Even though I don't believe in the Lord. Oh no!
So I've got a bit of a boo boo, nothing too bad. Nothing that a bit of super glue won't sort out. So we'll put this to the side and get this action cleaned up. We'll put that action screw in, see what it's like. Zoom on that, and I can do you a compare from the other day. Focused, uh, and then we wiggle the barrel from the end, it goes back to the middle, which is exactly what we were looking for. So all I'm going to do now is clean the rest of the, the JB weld out of the stock so that the uh, trigger group can fit in there, which is going to be great fun, laddie. Well, what's that done? I've just actually realised after all of this time that I used the wrong JB well. This feels more like plastic. And um, the metal, oh, it's, it's, I don't really need to see, we'll be able to see it on this, but it's quite flexible. It doesn't break. I thought that's any good. The barrel seems to be nice and solid now compared to where it was a few hours ago. I'll tidy this mess up. And we'll give it all at once a, a good clean over. And put it back together. 
and then uh, we'll shoot some groups with it on Saturday, see how it comes out. Well, I had a bit of an issue in here whereby the bedding on this shelf made, this is really hard to see, made the gap down there too tall for this gap here. And I couldn't actually get the, the barreled action to slide back enough in the stock. But that was resolved simply by removing, removing the vertical bedding from both ends, obviously, otherwise the rifle will tip up, and leaving the side and rear bedding in.